trains, he's done planes, and he's getting ever closer to space next. It's our very own star man. It's Sir Richard Branson. Good evening, Richard. Hello. Richard, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you so much um, for doing this, and thank you for coming on in what we know has been a very, very difficult uh, week mm. for you. A lot of people will have seen... Uh, your very, very moving Instagram tribute to your mum, Eve, who you lost uh, last weekend, and you asked us... Uh, well, you very kindly sent us some lovely pictures and asked us to um, to show them tonight, which we're delighted uh, to do. Just tell us a bit, if you would, about your mum, Eve, and condolences, obviously, from all of us. Well, first, first of all, pretty well every family in Britain has um, been touched by COVID and, and lost somebody. And, and, and um, so our family is no different to, to everybody else's families. Um, uh, she was an extraordinary woman, like mo you know, most most mums are. Um, I, I, I sort of owed Virgin to her, uh, which she didn't have any money. Um, but one day she found a necklace in Guildford High Street, handed it into the police, and uh, three months later they uh, said that nobody had claimed it, so she could have it back, and she sold it for a hundred pounds. And, and and I was sixteen at the time. She gave me the hundred pounds, and that was what uh, got Virgin Virgin going. So. And so that was something which I was obviously always very, very grateful to her for. Um, but, but she was an extraordinary lady. I mean, right, you know, in the Second World War, uh, she dressed up as a man in order to become a glider pilot. Um, she got away with it for a few months, despite being rather an attractive mayor, uh, 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 a glider pilot. Um, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and she continued her life um, doing wonderful, wonderful things like that. And, and we all had to run, run to keep up with her. Oh, and what does she make then of your success? I mean, it, as you said, it all started with a necklace, which is a wonderful story. But, you know, it grew. I mean, now it's a huge, huge empire. What, what did she make of that then, Richard? I think she was proud. Um, I mean, like the mothership of um, Virgin Galactic is going to be taking people to space um, and myself in two or three months' time. Um, uh, it's called Eve after her, and, and you know, obviously, I, I, I was I, I loved, loved to be, lucky to be a, a son who can sort of t take take his mum to such a an event and unveil um, unveil it and let her see that um, that the mothership is named Eve, um, you know, after her. And, and so she was proud, but I was, you know, we were all even more proud of her. I mean, she set up wonderful foundation in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco and you know, taught people languages, French, English. Um, she was still trying to perfect her French. She had French lessons only last year. Wow. Um, and um, uh, and she was you know, teaching, teaching people to learn, um, to, to learn crafts and so on. So, yeah, lucky. She was extraordinary. Oh, she sounds like a wonderful Absolute woman and obviously is still very raw, Richard. We send our best wishes to you and the family and we'll talk a bit later. Yeah. <laughs> Last September, for the first time ever, electric and hybrid cars outsold diesels in Europe. But while their popularity is on the up, there's still one thing causing many people, and me included, to put the brakes on joining the electric revolution. The fear of running out of juice, no two ways about it. Charging an electric car just isn't as fast or convenient as popping into a petrol station and filling up. If we're all going to switch to electric before the sale of petrol and diesel cars is banned in 2030, then how we charge those vehicles has got to change. But it seems that's already underway. So, I've hired this electric car and I'm on my way to somewhere that's been dubbed the forecourt of the future. Before I get too far away from home, I want to get some tips, you know, to keep my recharging fears away. Melanie Shufflebotham is from ZapMap, an app which helps drivers find their nearest charging point. So Mel, what top tips can you give me? First of all, you need to plan ahead. You need to make sure you know which uh, charge points are best for your vehicle, how long it's going to take to charge. You're in a, in a Nissan Leaf, um, so it will take you around 40, 40 minutes to charge on a rapid charger. Um, secondly, make sure you've got the correct app. And thirdly, don't worry, you'll be fine and, and have a great trip. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you. Mel's a bit more confident than I am right now. As an electric car newbie, I've got a lot to learn. The whole charging network is run by around 40 operators, of which can't seem to agree on one simple way of paying. And that rapid charging Mel mentioned is one of four different speeds of charger. And that's before you start to talk about connectors and adapters. Right, 
let the fun and games begin. I think AC is the slow charge. So I don't want that one. Oh, hang on a minute, AC rapid, it's saying here. Right, OK, now that's confusing me now. To charge your car, use the electric highway smartphone app. I just want to charge my car. Right, OK, I think we're finally there now. And whilst I wait for a top-up, I'm meeting with motoring journalist Steve Fowler to get his take on what needs to change to persuade more drivers to go electric. But there's so much wrong with the charging network. It's about charge anxiety. Am I going to be able to find a charging point? Will it work? Will it be easy to work? Which app do I need to use? We need a little bit more of a, a shove from government to make sure that this is done. The Competition and Markets Authority is looking at the charging networks at the moment. As I say, we, we don't want to regulate them, but they need to self-regulate a little bit more. So why can't it just be one simple paying system? Yeah, I'd love us to have just one app for every single charging point. Simple is going to get people into electric cars. Over in Braintree, simple is definitely what you get at a solar-powered site that feels like a real game-changer. Gridserve claims to be Britain's first electric-only forecourt and Toddington Harper is the brains behind it. So I've got to say, the last service station I used, I had to download the app, it took me a bit of time, but here, I just tapped my contactless card and away I went, perfect. It's designed to be incredibly easy. There are 36 chargers here. We've also got a supermarket, a post office. We've got exercise bikes too that generate energy. Cars equipped with the latest charging tech could potentially add around 200 miles of range here in just 10 minutes and all the electricity this place uses is net zero carbon. I've got to say, it's all well and good if you live around this area. Our plan is to build over 100 sites across the country over the next five years so that we can have a whole UK-wide network. And it's not just Toddington with big plans. Oil company Shell aims to open its first all-electric forecourt in the London area this year. And whilst there's clearly still a long way to go, could four courts like these finally be the charging solution the industry needs? Well, a fascinating film from Kevin. That Richard Branson is with us. Richard, um, people won't be surprised to know you've taken a very close interest in electric vehicles. You, uh, you started your own racing team. You've given huge amounts of money to the uh, fight against climate change. But I feel like we've been talking about electric cars for a long time. I was reading newspaper articles about it 10 years ago saying we'd all be driving electric uh, vehicles by now. Why do you think it's not yet happened? Why hasn't it happened as quickly as we would have liked for it to happen? Well, it was only about 10 years ago that uh, a young man turned up at my front door, um, had, had brought a car all the way over from uh, America, his first, first car he'd built, um, wanted to take me for a test drive. Um, and that young man was called Elon Musk. And, um, uh, and it was a beautiful car. Um, and uh, he went back to America with the car and he started um, building um, many of those beautiful cars. Um, and it took a while for um, the bigger competitors to answer back. And by the time they answered back, uh, he built the biggest car company in the world. And, um, and I think Elon uh, realized that um, that the public will, would benefit massively from electric cars. Um, yes, there would be little teething problems like your programs talked about, but it, it's a lot cheaper to have, a, have an electric car. It's much, much better for the environment. Mm. Um, and, yeah, sorry. No, and, absolutely, and Elon Musk has been absolutely vindicated, hasn't he, and then some. Um, let's talk about another campaign that you're throwing your uh, very considerable support behind, Richard, which is about helping dyslexic children. And you've spoken about this in the past very publicly. When did you first realise that you were dyslexic? Well, uh, when I was a child, um, the word dyslexia didn't exist. So I was just uh, stupid at school. That, or people thought I was stupid or thick. Um, and... Uh, and, and that's what I was told I was. I was hopeless at conventional, uh, the conventional learning. Um, and so when I got my 100, 100 pounds from my mum, I left school to, you know, to start a magazine and, and build Virgin and, and so on. Um, and, and so without being dyslexic, I may not have left school. Um, but you know, late, later on in life, when I was in my 20s, I, I got tested and I was told that I, uh, that I was dyslexic. Um, and, you know, it's come out in strange ways. I mean, I, I was having a board meeting when I was 50 years old, um, and uh, one of the directors said to me, Richard, I, I, I don't 
think you know the difference between net and gross. And um, and I, because I would say, is this good news or bad news? When the figures were presented, of Virgin Virgin's figures, and uh, and he said, look, let, let me show you. And he pulled out a bit of paper. He penciled the paper in blue, and he put a uh, a net, a fishing net, in the paper, and said, the, the, the fish that are left in that net, that's your net profit, and the rest is the rest is your <laughs> gross turnover. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I managed to build, you know, quite a, quite a, quite an interesting group of companies around the world, uh, despite being dyslexic and despite not knowing the difference between net and gross. So, um, you know, what what I'm trying to do now is to talk to kids who are dyslexic and just get them to um, uh, to push for the things that they're good at in life and yeah. not to worry too much if they can't spell. And, what an inspiring uh, message. What a hugely inspiring really is. message. I'll tell you what, Richard, let's bring Kate Griggs in because she's the lady. Hello, Kate. Good okay. evening. You're the lady behind the campaign made by Dyslexia. And, of course, you, you've roped in people like Richard and other well-known faces to show children that being dyslexic, as we've heard from Richard, can be an advantage, actually, can't it? Absolutely. I mean, dyslexic thinking skills are hugely valuable for the future of work. Um, we know that the World Economic Forum um, has mapped dyslexic thinking exactly against the skills that, that we need. So we just need to try and flip the way we think about dyslexia from a difficulty to actually a really valuable way of thinking that we need to be spotting and nurturing. And tell us about this lovely book then that you've gone, uh, that you've made to coincide with the campaign. I think we've got a picture of it. Here we go. Extraordinary people. So That's this great. is about sort of bringing out the traits that people like Richard have, isn't it? So that other children with dyslexia can be inspired by it. Absolutely right. So we, we know what dyslexic thinking looks like in adults. And this book is the first time we've actually looked at what it looks like in kids. So the idea is it's the perfect introduction for teachers, for parents to actually um, understand dyslexia, talk about dyslexia to their kids. Um, so we're really, really hoping that it's something that every single teacher and every school will will buy into to actually have a look at how brilliant dyslexic kids are. Terrific. And Richard, last month, you, um, I love this, you surprised a school class in Devon that was actually studying you as a subject. And you met a boy called Jake who's uh, just been told that he was dyslexic. What advice did you give him? <laughs> um, just, to, just to follow his dreams, um, not worry about the fact that his spelling wasn't great. You, he's got <coughs> Google that can do the spelling for him. Um, and one day, you know, he'll be in a position where he can lead and then empower people and, um, and go on to great things, and, well, and as a lot of dyslexics do. Well, you made quite an impression on Jake because he sent us this message to show to you. Hi, Richard. I loved our chat that we had. Thank you for speaking to me. I see schoolwork slightly differently to how I did before and the future and you've really inspired me. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. he's great, isn't he? Absolutely fantastic. Um, Good on you, Thank you so much to both of you, to Richard and to Kate. And Extraordinary People is available to download now and physical copies are out next month. It is a lovely book. Yeah, and I should just say, I mean, I think we've lost Richard, but we've been absolutely inundated with your messages of uh, condolence uh, to him. Uh, Richard's there. Richard, I just want you to know that the One Show viewers have absolutely flooded us with messages of condolence uh, to you and your family about the loss of your mother. In fact, Vanessa and Susie have said they'd like to pass their condolences. Rich's wonderful mother, Eve's work with the talking books for the blind was inspirational, they say. A wonderful lady remembered always with love. So thank you so and much. And to everybody else's family who are listening. Yeah, brilliant.